Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here. In my previous video, we went over the macOS Ventura 13.4.1 RSR Rapid Security Response Update, only for it to have multiple problems, and Apple pulled the update later that day. Once they did, they immediately started going in and trying to fix the problem, and they did, and they released Ventura 13.4.1C RSR. So we're gonna explain that, plus we're gonna go over a live demo of installing the RSR on our M1 MacBook Air, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about RSRs on OpenCore Legacy patch your unsupported devices because I've been getting a lot of questions on that. You're going to want to stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. So a little history about what happened as I mentioned in the intro about my previous video. We talked about the RSRA update for 13.4.1 and also iOS 16.5.1a and as soon as the update was out people were installing it and immediately started to report about website loading issues due to what was later found to be a user agent issue meaning that Safari was not reporting properly to the website and the websites weren't loading. So Apple pulled that update later in the day and I talked about it here. We were thinking that they were gonna release the update that next day, but that did not happen. They continued to work on it and then finally the next day after that, along with the public beta release of macOS Sonoma, they released the macOS Ventura 13.4.1c Rapid Security Response. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about this document here. Apple was not documenting the Rapid Security Response updates. And we reached out to Apple, a lot of the Mac administrators did saying, hey, listen, even though this is a small update, we need to understand when they're out and what they contain. And Apple came through and they now document this and it's a really nice thing so we can understand what's going on. Now, what they also did is they did communicate inside the A update later on that there was issues with this. They said here that, hey, this is before they came out with C, they said that there is an issue and we are working on a fix and they said that they were gonna come out with B. Now, what we don't understand is why they skipped over B and went straight to C. It doesn't really matter, but it was a little bit curious why they didn't just come out with a B and they, they, they can come out with as many RSRs as they can between updates, so there's no limit. So this is probably the highest that we're gonna see until a major update, for example, 13.4.5 comes out maybe in a week or two that will contain all of the rapid security response update fixes in there. So what does the RSR contain? Well, this was a pretty big deal because it is a web vulnerability that is in WebKit that can lead to arbitrary code execution. And what does arbitrary code execution mean? Well, let's say a ta an attacker crafts some web content, for example, visiting a web page, and what it can do is it gives the ability to run commands or code on the target device that visits this website with this specific web content. Now, the next sentence here is the important piece, is that Apple is aware that of reports that this code has been already out there, and that users are clicking on it, it is affecting their device and could be spreading. Apple addressed this and it is fixed now with improved checks. So meaning that if someone tries to run this web content, the check should find and block that content that's trying to run. So it's great that it's fixed. And that's the whole point of a rapid security response update is that between 13.4.1 and 13.5, they can release this quick RSR to patch this security vulnerability that's pretty serious without coming out with a full update like 13.5 when Apple's still working on that right now. So that's the idea behind the RSR update. Now that we know that, let's go to our demo device here and take a closer look at what that looks like in system settings. Now to check for the RSR, all we need to do is go into software updates and system preferences. Once we are in system preferences and looking at software update, it'll immediately start to check if it hasn't already. Mac OS Security Response 13.4.1c. And you can get more information about it by clicking on more info and you can see the information in here. Now, one thing that a couple of users have reached out about is they say, hey, I don't see the RSR in my software update. All I see is a macOS update. Well, that's the critical piece here. 
you cannot install the RSR update unless you are on 13.4.1. So let's say you're on 13.3 or 13.4 only, you're not gonna see the RSR until you install 13.4.1. That's the base OS version where you can install this rapid security response update. We mentioned earlier that if you install the 13.4.1a update, you will still see the C because that's gonna fix that issue. But wonder if you uninstalled that A update and now you don't have it installed. That's okay because C will include those fixes and the proper fix where the website loading issue won't happen anymore. So that is all wrapped into the C update. All we need to do is click apply now. And what it'll do is it'll ask us for our account password and it'll immediately start to download. The updates is very small itself. It's only six megabytes and it patches, again, just the WebKit part. There's no operating system or kernel fixes in this particular RSR update. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually try to track to see how long it takes to install the RSR update. Now the only issue that people have been kind of complaining about is the fact that the RSR update does require restart. We were hoping that if it had to patch a WebKit vulnerability that we wouldn't need to restart, but there's pieces inside the Mac operating system that are being patched so that system will need to restart at a very, very base level. So we'll give this a little bit of processing time here. We start at 11.35 p.m. and we'll see how long it takes to process. It's giving a recommendation of about five minutes remaining. We'll see how long that takes. Okay, we're back up and that was fast. We can take a look at the notes here. We started at 35, 11.35 p.m. and we finished at 11.37. That was only two minutes of preparation time, not for the full five minutes, and then immediately rebooted. The installation took under a minute. So I only, I did still put a minute, so probably 50 seconds on the reboot. And when we are all finished, three minutes from start to finish, so the RSR was very quick, very fast with no issues whatsoever. After installing, the build version did change, and we'll take a look at that. And the build version changed to 22F770820D. And you can see the marker for product version extra is at C. So we successfully installed the update. We also did get a bump in the Safari version. If we go to about the Safari, we see that we jumped to 11.10. So that build version did change, but the main version 16.5.2 is the same. I decided to run Geekbench 6 score run this time that just to make sure that we didn't see any kind of performance problems due to the issues with the A update and we shouldn't. And that's the whole point of running this. It should be right on target. On 13.4.1, we had 23.58 on the single and 85.82 on the multi-core. And on the C build, which is nice that it recognizes right here, we have 23.56 and 85.72. So right on target. So no issues here. Now, I wonder if you wanted to be able to uninstall the RSR. Now, I mentioned that in my previous video, but I couldn't do the walkthrough because I didn't get to install the A before Apple pulled it. But now that C's here, we can show you that really quick. When you go to About This Mac in the general section, About, you'll see your Mac OS version right here. If you click on it again, you'll see the build version will show up, and there it is. And all you need to do is click the information circle to be able to go to the next area. And this is the area where you show, it shows right here what the last update was that you were on, 22F82 and the current one that we're on here. And all you need to do is click remove and restart. It'll take a second or two and then it'll restart and you'll be back on 22F82. And that's what a lot of people did when they installed the A and were having website loading issues. So Apple makes it really easy to be able to remove the RSR from Echoes Ventura. Now that we have a successful good install on our M1 supported Mac, let's talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about our unsupported Macs with OpenCore Legacy Patcher running and installing the rapid security response updates. I've had a lot of people reach out saying, "Hey, I'm having issues installing the update. It tries to install and it fails out." Well, there's a big reason, and I'll show you what that is now. And the problem is, is that not all of the Macs are supported for rapid security response updates, and the developers are working on this, but as of now, the only Macs that are supported by RSR updates is Macs that are on Haswell or newer. So if we take a look at the list of the Mac models here, we can see that Haswell from 2013 newer can install the rapid security response update. 
but anything older like Ivy Bridge, for example, 2012, or Sandy Bridge, for example, you cannot install RSR. So if you got one of these versions and you are trying to install it, that's the problem, and it will not fully install. It'll start to install a little bit, then error out, and then it won't do. So don't worry about that. Like if you're, you're really worried, the good news is, is like I mentioned earlier in the video, once 13.5 comes out, it will be included, the fixes in the 13.5 update that you will be able to install on your unsupported Mac. We are on a 2015 Mac here, which is Haswell, so we are okay. It's actually a mid-2015 MacBook Pro i7, so we are good to go installing the RSR update. So all we need to do is go to our software update like we did on a supported Mac, and we can click Install Now. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to download and prepare the installation. And the install time should be close to being the same. But we're going to count it anyway. We're starting at 11.53 p.m. And we'll see how long it takes. And there we go. Two minutes just like the before. All we need to do is click restart. Okay, we are back up. And you'll notice something right away. With the non-transparent password box and the messed up resolution, we're gonna need to apply those post volume root patches after logging in. Now we're gonna let Open Core Legacy Patcher do the work for us because remember the launch daemon fires off, checks to see if it needs to do the post volume root patches and it's gonna detect that it did because the snapshot was sealed after installing the RSR update and it should pop up a message box here saying, we've noticed that the patches aren't installed. Would you like to to install them and we'll give it a second here and this is exactly what we were waiting on open core legacy patches detected that you're running without root patches would you like to install them now let's click on okay and our password and there it goes and it should be done here right after the rebuilding of the kernel cache okay it's done all we need to do is click on reboot and restart All right, we're back up and as you can see right away, the resolution is fixed and we have our transparent password box. Let's log in and verify everything's okay. Okay, we'll open up Open Core Legacy Patcher and we're gonna check to see that all the root patches are installed and they are all applicable patches are already installed July 14, 2023. Now let's check the version to make sure we're okay. So do SW version and there we go. 13.4.1c, we have our RSR installed on our unsupported Mac running Open Core Legacy Patcher. If you have any questions on this process, let me know in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.